For week 10, we'll explore more types of hypothesis testing and also introduce a new approach. For part one, we'll talk about that new approach, um, what's called the alpha and p-value approach to hypothesis testing. Um, just some definitions to start off with. A p-value is the probability that we observe what we observe in our sample, or even more extreme, more supportive of HA, if the null hypothesis were actually true. Um, this is called the observed significance level. Remember, the alpha value is called our significance level. The p-value is called the observed significance level, and there's a reasoning for this. In order for us to calculate the p-value, we must first calculate what's, you know, the standardized test statistic, the z-value that you saw in the last week. Um, then use the uh, table to calculate the area of the region shaded in the same direction as HA. So if it's a right tail test, you shade to the right. If it's a left tail test, you shade to the left. And if it's a two tail test, you're not really going to shade in both directions. Um, you're actually just going to double the area in the direction of the tail. Um, you'll see that in a moment, well, in maybe about 10 minutes. So let's recall. Um, alpha is the probability that you reject HO when HO is true. Um, it was called the significance level. Another way to view this alpha value is as a threshold. It's the maximum value that a p-value can be um, for us to still support HA and reject HO. Um, graphically, what I'm just trying to explain is that if we're dealing with a lower tail or a left tail test, our test statistics usually like somewhere over here on the left, but it really could be anywhere. And we're going to shade to the left, and this area to the left is our p-value. So our p-value is connected to the test statistic. Remember, the alpha value is connected to the z-alpha, or the critical value. So they're very similar in how they're calculated. Um, remember, the alpha values you're choosing, it's not really calculated. But mathematically speaking, they're very similar concepts. Um, except that the p-value is calculated from data, where alpha values are choice. It's our threshold value. It's our willingness to be wrong, essentially. Um, if we're dealing with a right tail test or an upper tail test, the p-value is just the area to the right of our test statistic. And for a two-tail test, um, it's a little confusing the way it's represented here, but the idea is that you just take your test statistic, let's look at this one, and shade towards the tail. And that's really only going to give you half the p-value, so we have to double that number. Whatever that number is, you just double it. And that's really the p-value. A quick note about this, though, if you're using software to generate p-values, the software is intelligent enough to automatically do this doubling for you, so you won't have to do it if you're using um, like a TI-83 or 84 calculator or some statistical software like StatCrunch. Okay, so here's our decision rule. If alpha is greater than the p-value, you reject HO. And if alpha is less than your p-value, if your threshold is less than the p-value you find, then you fail to reject HO. This is a super important rule to memorize, um, mostly because it allows you to really conduct any type of hypothesis testing. If you read uh, some dissertation of something that you really didn't understand, as long as you knew what HO and HA were and you could find a p-value, you can understand the results. Um, so it's incredibly powerful in that sense. Um, because it's so important to memorize, one of my friends um, ages ago taught me this really cool memory technique. Um, if you look at alpha, what does alpha look like? It kind of looks like a fish. You see like a fish with like, a little tail on it? So she said, okay, alpha is alpha is a fish, and p for p-value stands for pond. So compare this to someone telling you a fish story um, or fish tale. Um, fish tales are often just kind of these exaggerated stories that are usually false, but maybe they're not. So one way you can tell <laughs> right away if a fish story is a well is a fish tale if it's if it's false is if they're describing the fish as bigger than the pond, right? So here's our pond, and if they're describing the fish as bigger than the pond you know right away that that story is false. There's no way the fish can be bigger than the pond it came from. So just like we know if a fish is bigger than a pond that the fish story is false, we also know HO is false because both situations are equally ridiculous. So HO is ridiculous if the fish is bigger than the pond. Okay, similarly, if alpha is less than our p-value, that means we have some big lake and 
our p value, I'm oh, sorry, <laughs> we have some uh, small fish and some big lake, right? So big pond, small fish. So if our fish is smaller than the pond it comes from, well, the story still might be false, but we can't prove it's false just based on the fish and the pond that it came from. So just like we can't prove that this story is false, we can't prove HO is false either. So we're going to fail to reject it. We can't prove they're false. Um, so I like this explanation of the fish in the pond, but just to go about it in a little bit more rigorous setting, um, let's revisit the carnival game example that we did last week. So remember in the carnival game example, um, the carnival worker explained that 90%, 9 out of 10 marbles in this container were red and 10% were white. We decided to play the game and three times in a row, we were unlucky enough, air quotes on that, to pull out a white marble, um, even though only 10% were supposed to be white. We calculated the probability of this happening, the probability of getting three white marbles in a row, um, or even more extreme than that, was one in a thousand. And that made us very suspicious of the game. So this is essentially what we're doing with um, this alpha p-value approach. Our p-value would be that one in 1,000. We were suspicious of the game because at any reasonable alpha value that we choose, such as 10%, 5%, 1%—this one in 1,000 chance, which is 0 0.0001, would be smaller. So alpha is going to be smaller than our p-value. So we'll reject HO. We're suspicious because the probability of us getting what we got is ridiculously small compared to any threshold value. Our willingness to accept this carnival worker's uh, claim that 90% of the marbles in the container were red. So we reject it. We reject that claim that 90% are red and 10% were white because alpha is bigger than P. Okay, so let's revisit the highway uh, speed example we did last week. And the reason why I'm revisiting this example is because we could do it either way. You have a choice. You could either use the rejection region approach we did last week, or we could do the alpha P value approach I'm talking about right now. So let's redo it. Um, so we want to test that the true average speed on the highway is more than 75 miles an hour. And we want to do this at an alpha value. Um, remember, this is our threshold value of 5%, our significance value, or our significance level. We randomly observe speeds of 100 cars and find that the average was 78.1, and the standard deviation was 12.4. So let's set up the null and alternative hypothesis just like before. So our first step is exactly the same as before. We say mu, our true mean, equals 75, and HA um, says that our true mean is more than 75 because that's what we want to test, that the average speed is more than 75. Um, this is where it changes a little bit. Um, we want to draw the distribution just from the start. You really don't have to do this step, but it's useful. And let's calculate our test statistic. Once we calculate our test statistic, we'll shade in the direction of HA. So let's do that. Um, we'll calculate our p-value from that and then compare that p-value to our alpha value. So drawing our uh, distribution. Uh, again, we're drawing this distribution as if HO was true, so it's centered around 75. Um, next, we're just going to um, draw a sample average in here, 78.1. That's a little different than we did before. Before, we set up the rejection regions first, but now we're actually going to show our test statistic first. So we have to calculate the z-value of this test statistic. Um, so our distribution centered around zero. Oops, I didn't actually draw that yet. And we have to calculate this test statistic over here. So uh, let's calculate this test statistic. Um, we're just going to use our formula for a z-score, which is a um, member from uh, the end of chapter 4, 4, 8, and 4, 9. That is just going to be x-bar minus mu um, over our standard error. Um, well, we don't really know mu, but we know mu as if HO was true, which is what we're talking about here. We're, talk we're calculating these numbers as if HO was true. So we'll call that mu naught. So it's going to be x bar minus mu naught over s divided by square root of n. Plugging in our numbers from the previous slide, we get that our z value is 2.5. So let's write that in there. Okay, next we want to calculate our p value. Since we're doing a right tail test, we're going to shade to the right. And that little region to the right, that's going to be our p-value. 
So let's calculate it. Um, we can calculate this using the table. Remember the table gives us the areas between 0 and z. So this is what the table is going to give us. But then we can take that number and subtract it from 0.5 to get our p-value. So let's pull up the table. And remember our z was 2.5. So 2.50. And that number right there is our um, area between 0 and z. So 0.4938. Let's write that in. So that area is 0.4938. And so our p-value is just 0.5 minus that, which is 0 0.0062. Now we're ready to make our conclusion. So since our alpha value, which was 0.05, is greater than our p-value, which is 0 0.0062, what are we going to conclude? Well, fish is bigger than a pond, so we reject HO. Um, we can put this a little bit more in context of the problem. We're rejecting that the average is 75, and we're saying there's sufficient evidence um, that uh, the average speed on the highway is more than 75 miles an hour. And we're sure of that at a 5% significance level. So uh, for example two, um, this is a completely made up example, by the way. Um, so far, all of these have been. Um, so suppose Sports Center claims that the average uh, number of points scored by an NBA team is 100 points per game, and you believe it's less than that. So to test this, and for some reason you don't want to just look it up online because that would be something you can easily look up online, but let's just take this as it is. So you, to test this, you're just going to watch the next 30 games played and find the average points per game. Well, the average for those 30 games you watched was 99, and the standard deviation was 8. So at a 1% significance level, is there sufficient evidence to refute the sports center's claim? All right, so if we're refuting it, remember, we believe it's less than that. So let's do a left tail test or a lower tail test. So let's identify HO and HA. It's always a good place to start to identify what we're trying to prove and disprove. So HO is the claim that the true mean is 100, and we believe it's less than that, that mu is less than 100. Okay, so next we're going to draw a curve and calculate our test statistic. Um, so again, using the same formula as before, our sample average was 99, subtracted from 100, divided by s over square root of n, so 8 over square root of 30. So again, just be very careful when you enter this into your calculator, and you get a z of negative 0.68. Let's draw a curve. Again, we're drawing this as if HO is true, so centered around 100. Our z values are below it, and our test statistic is going to be somewhere over here on the left, to the left of 0. So, right, our sample average is 99. Our test statistic associated with that is negative 0.68. Since we're doing a left tail test, our p-value is going to be this area to the left. So let's go to the table, look up the area between 0 and z. Remember, our z was negative 0.68, but that's okay. So 0 0.68, we'll just look up the positive one because we know it's symmetric. And we get 0.2517. So the area between 0 and z is 0.2517. So subtract that from 0.5, and you get 0.2483. That is our p-value. So we can compare it to our alpha value. So alpha, which was 1%, is less than our p-value this time. The fish is smaller than the pond, which means, well, HO could be true. So let's fail to reject HO. We don't know it's just true. We, we don't know that it's false. So therefore, we have to fail to reject it. All right, let's move on. Um, so let's revisit our cereal boxes example from last class, uh, in the last class last week. A manufacturer of cereal boxes produces their cereal in boxes labeled 14 ounces. To test if the average weight of all the boxes is 14 ounces, they sampled 500 boxes. Um, the average of those 500 was uh, 14.1 ounces with a standard deviation of 1.2. Let's test this claim at the 1% significance level. So setting up the null alternative hypothesis, and again, this is the same as last week. Um, we're going to say the true mean is 14. 
uh, for HO, and HA is that the true mean is not equal to 14. Okay, so drawing our curve. Again, we're drawing this as if HO is true. So it's centered around 14. And of course, our Zs are always centered around zero. Let's calculate our test statistic. Um, remember, that's associated with our sample average of 14.1. So using our formula, 14.1 uh, minus 14 divided by 1.2 over the square root of 500. And we get 1.86. So that is our test statistic. Since we're doing a two-tailed test, we're going to start this off by shading in the direction of the tail. So let's uh, find that area to left of the tail. Remember, this is only going to give us half the p-value since it's a two-tailed test. So pulling it up our table, remember our z was 1.86. So we have 1.8, go over to 6, and we get... Uh, just circle the right one, yeah, 0.4686. So that's our area between 0 and Z is 0.4686, which means our p-value is 0.5 minus that. So that's 0.0314. Remember, this is only half our p-value, though. So when we want to make our conclusion, um, remember our alpha value was 1%. Our p-value is actually 0.0628 double the number we found because it's a two-tailed test. And remember, if you use software, it's automatically going to do that for you. So uh, our alpha value is 1%, our p-value is a little over 6%. So our alpha value, which is our threshold, is less than our p-value, our observed value. So therefore, we're going to fail to reject HO.